Hey everyone, this is Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to another Dialog System video. Adding a colored and different sized text to your dialogue is a time-honored tradition in video games and something that you're definitely going to want for your dialogue system. In this video then, we'll look at how to add these rich text tags to your dialogue. Before we get started though, a quick note on my indebtedness to Trevor Mock, whose video on this was incredibly helpful for figuring out some of the coding challenges. Be sure to check his site out if you get a chance. Now the basics of adding a rich text tag are actually really quite simple. For example, if I wanted Martin's name to be displayed in blue, I could just go triangle bracket, color equals, and then quotation marks put blue. Don't forget to close your quotation marks like I did here. Then, after the word, you could go color equals, and then set it back to the original color, in my case, black. You can also stack up your tags. So for example, I could do bracket B for bold, and then after Martin, I do another bracket B for bold, but this time just add a slash in front to show that I'm ending the bolded section. I can also add other effects like italics by using a bracket I and a bracket slash I to close that up. Now, just to be sure that this is all working, you should be able to look in your game view and see that the color is changing as well as the italics and that sort of thing. Though obviously making all of these changes in our dialog box itself won't have much of an effect on the game. We need to go into our dialog folder, pick an actual scriptable object conversation and make the changes there. So I've just copy pasted my other text in here, but let's also set perplex to purple and maybe do a little bit of a size change as well. Now for a list of all the different rich text tags that are available, you can visit the Unity API for that. There's a lot of great examples here, as well as a, a table that shows all of the different options you have all together. One of the most useful will be the color codes down at the bottom. And these are great, especially if the blue that Unity picks as your blue is not the one you want. You can choose from a whole bunch here. All right, so when we run our game, you'll notice that things are kind of a mess. The end result is exactly what we've coded in, but getting there is not working so great. What's happening is that we are actually showing the rich text tags as text, and that's not what we want. So let's pop into our code, and to do that, we're gonna head to the advanced dialogue manager script. So the problems we're encountering at this point are a result of our typewriter effect, which causes Unity to only process one character at a time when going through text. So it doesn't realize it's met a rich text tag until the end of that tag. So what we need to do is suspend our typewriter effect when we encounter one of these tags. To do that, we'll head down into our typewriter effect coroutine. And if you look here in this for each loop, this is where we go through each individual letter. And at the moment for each letter, we print the letter and then wait whatever our typing speed is. We are going to suspend that. And to do that, we're just gonna make a check here that is gonna to check to see if we're working with a rich text tag. Now we're gonna need a Boolean value here that will allow us to actually check that. And we'll call this adding rich text tag. We'll initialize it at false and don't forget to actually tell it that it's a bool. Now it's not gonna like that for the moment, but that's okay, we'll fix it in a second. We can now head down here to the note we made about our rich text tag, and we're gonna perform our check. And what we wanna do is see if the letter we're currently looking at is equal to an open triangle bracket. If it is, that means we've just entered a rich text tag, or if it's true that we're already in a rich text tag. Now, if that is true, we can suspend our wait typing speed part of the method and just go straight to displaying the next letter. So we can copy that from down below and paste it in here just without the wait. We also wanna make sure that if we have encountered an open bracket that our method knows that we're now inside a rich text tag. That way when it moves to the next part of the tag, which is not an open bracket, it will continue to act as though it's in a tag because this value is true. Now we wanna do one more check and that's just each time we look at a letter now, we wanna to check to see if we've reached the end of our tag, symbolized by the closed triangle bracket. And if we have, then we'll make our adding rich text tag equal to false. Now, when it comes to the next letter, it will just skip over this part of the method and go back to our typewriter effect. But to make that happen, of course, we need to add an else statement. I'll also make a quick note here, just that this is if we're not using rich text tags. And we can now just copy paste the original typewriter effect part into there, and we should be all good to go. Let's head back into our code and try this out. 
So now when you get into the game and you initiate your dialogue, you'll see that things are showing up just as you desire without having that problem where we first show it as text. All right, I hope you've found this one helpful and you can now really play around with your text and get some interesting things happen. I'll be continuing this series on polishing our dialogue system with some more tutorials to come. Look forward to seeing you in those videos. But until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.